All right, so you're planning on building your ultimate gaming PC and you have the choice. Do you get an Astral 5090 LC or the traditional air-cooled 5090? What's in, really, let's kind of break it down. What are the big pros and cons to either form factor? Yeah, um, it's, it's funny. Okay, so you say pros and cons. A lot of people just think that it's like a tiered system, right? That like liquid-cooled is better, air-cooled is not as good. End of discussion. Mm. And like i get where that's coming from but it's not always the case and it depends heavily on your build it depends on the case you're using of course it depends on your budget things like that mm. um so you know i wanted to because i know we have both cards right we have an astral 5090 we have the astral 5090 lc so i wanted to use this as an opportunity to both talk about the differences between those two cards mm. and then also we have three different builds that you and i have built and have footage of where we can talk about situations in which one card works better than another. And yes, I do have a build in which air cooling is required because water cooling straight up doesn't work. Um, so let's talk about, uh, start talking about the differences between these two cards. So both of these cards are going to have great performance, right? We have an Astral 5090 and we have an Astral 5090 LC. We have the Astral 5082, which you have in your build. Um, all of these cards are going to perform really well. Just like, let's start there, right? We've got factory overclocked versions. The chips are binned to have, you know, good overclock clock speeds out of the box beyond the stock clocks we get from NVIDIA. And the air cooling system on the, the new Astral 5080 and 5090 are, are excellent, right? So here it is. We did a uh, kind of a mini teardown of these a couple weeks ago that you can go check out if you want to see uh, everything that's new about that compared to last year's Strix cards. Mm -hmm. But as always, liquid cooling is very efficient um, because you're using that liquid as a conductor to, and then move it through the radiator and kind of blow, blow out the radiator. That's just going to be a more efficient way to dissipate that heat. So you're going to get lower temperatures, which gives you more headroom if you want to do your own overclocking, even beyond that, that factory overclock that we provide. So, Yes, from a performance and thermal standpoint, the liquid cooled model is going to outperform Astral. Although, again, because we're always improving our air cooling on our air cooling models, we, we are trying to close that gap as, as much as we can. Now, there is another aspect to this. It's not just about thermals and performance. Um, for me personally, I don't, I don't really, I don't overclock most of my cards these days. Um, so I don't care a ton about manual overclocking headroom. What I care about is fan noise. Mm. And that kind of plays a role in this as well, because if you look at this, this liquid-cooled card right here, you've got 320 millimeter fans on that radiator. On the standard Astral, the three fans on the front are smaller. They're the size of the card because they have to fit on the card itself. A, a larger fan all the things kept equal is going to be a quieter fan for the same amount of air flowing through it. So that is another advantage of the liquid cooled cards um, is that you're going to be able to get them a little bit quieter, especially for the same thermal performance. Now that doesn't mean that air cooled cards are like loud necessarily. Um, that's one of the reasons that we we've, we've done a couple things to try and give you control over that. One is that we have that dual bio switch yeah. um, on all of our graphics cards this year, right? So you can flip that into Q mode and it will have quieter operation. We actually released a BIOS update recently that if you download and install that to your Astral card, even quieter. Um, it's going to get quieter, even quieter than it was at launch. Yeah. yeah. So if you've seen reviews or whatever, like consider it even quieter than that with the newest Q mode. And uh, what's really cool is that all of our cards, if if you're doing a low power task, if you're just browsing the web, if you're just watching videos or even doing like a, like a light indie game, um, if the... Fans don't need to be spinning. They will turn off entirely. So you get completely silent operation from that card, which yeah, is cool. Mine aren't doing anything at all right now. It's kind of nice. Yeah, exactly. M mine either. Um, now, all of that said, if you are a silence nut like me, whether you have an air-cooled or liquid-cooled card, I do recommend going beyond Q mode, downloading GPU tweak, and tuning your own custom fan curves to fit that perfect balance between silence and performance for you. Because... The, the ideal fan curve is going to vary from person to person based on their preferences. It's going to vary based on the ambient temperature of your room. It's going to vary based on the case you're using and how much noise leaks through that case. 
and so on, things like that. There is no one best fan curve for everyone. And I've actually been thinking we should do a stream that shows people how to like tune their PC for silence. Cause I got some cool tips that's and a good tricks idea. I think that we could like, so, you know, subscribe, follow, let us know if that's something you want to see. Um, and then we mentioned this before in a previous stream as well. And I'll talk about this a little bit later, but um, our air cooled cards also have those fan connect two headers on the front which allows you to um, connect them to some of your case fans. And that may allow you to kind of play with those, those temperatures and noise levels as well. And we'll show some of that off in a bit. So I want to show off some builds where it might make more sense to go with one or the other. Again, I know a lot of people are like, well, liquid cooled is the best, but you know, one of the advantages that air cooled cards have is convenience, right? So with an air cooled card like Jake has here in his build, you just pop it in and you go. That's you it. You don't need to mount a separate radiator. Yep. You don't have to think about different fan configurations. And for some people, that convenience factor is going to be enough to just go air cooled. Right. More right? plug and play in that regard, for sure. Hundred and- percent. Especially if you have a pre built that you're upgrading or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you're probably going to have a much easier time upgrading to an air cooled uh, card than trying to figure out. The, the liquid cooling stuff. Yeah, but um, yeah, this is the 5080 Astral. It's in my case right now. Live live feed. That's my finger. Wow, really showing me up because mine are not going to be live feeds. You're not going to see my finger. So, <laughs> um, so okay. So speaking of pre-builds or, or other, so Jake's case here is a perfect example of where you could use air or liquid cooled. You could totally go either way. Those fans along the bottom, if you're using an air cooled card, you could plug those into those fan connect two headers. Mm-hmm. And that's going to have those bottom fans instead of um, ramping up and down based on the CPU temperature, like they would when they're plugged into the motherboard, you could have those ramp up and down based on the GPU temperature. And again, bigger fans going to be quieter for those same air moved. And since they're blowing right at the GPU, you will probably be able to use that to get better temperatures on the GPU, maybe a little bit quieter than you would with just the GPU ramping up and down. That's something nice that we built into our air cooled cards to kind of help you again kind of bridge that gap between the two if this is what you choose to run jake's also running a 5080 in this build which we only offer an air cooled configuration right now but i have a liquid cooled 5090 right here that i'm going to send to jake soon oh my goodness it's happening so this is a nice big case with lots of fans, multiple vents. You could go either way. You've done both in this case, right? You've done liquid cooled in this case. Yep. I did the matrix card last generation in this case, and that was liquid cooled and it worked great because I put the radiator on the side panel over there and it just was perfect, right? So, yeah. You've got three fans right there on the side. Perfect yep. place to mount the radiator because your CPU cooler, correct. that radiator is mounted to the, top, to the top, right? Correct. Yep. So you see this in a lot of cases these days where they'll have a big vent along the top for radiators and a big vent along the front or like along the side there for radiators. Now, not all cases have that available though. So Mm -hmm. let's take a look at my desktop. This is the desktop that I'm sitting at right now. And if you notice, I'm using liquid cooling on the CPU. I've got a two by 140 mil radiator that is kind of attached to the front. Um, and my case does not have any vents along the top. So I don't really have room for another radiator. I do have no. two 120 mil fans there on the bottom, but you can see the power supply cables are kind of overlapping those because it's a bit more of a, it's still a it's tower a case, but it's a slightly yeah. more compact one. I mean, it and barely works with the, with a 40 series card, right? Like I, Now I could maybe do like a, a 120 mil radiator for my CPU, but even then, with the Astral LC5090, that's a 3 by 120 mil yeah. rad. That's a, a, a long rad. I literally don't have 360 millimeter vents in this particular case. Yeah. So liquid-cooled, for the 50 series generation at least, is not an option for me in this case. Yeah. Got to go air-cooled, which is fine. I've been going air-cooled on it for quite some time, put it into Q mode, manually tune my fan curves. Um and when I had a Strix card in here, I had those bottom two case fans plugged into the Fan Connect 2 headers like we just talked about, and it worked great. Honestly, perfectly happy with that. Um, so this is a situation in which, yes, liquid cooling might be technically better, but that doesn't mean that you should just go buy a liquid-cooled card because you're going to have a lot of trouble putting it in a case it doesn't actually fit in. Right. You could upgrade your case, and one day I may, but right now I'm perfectly happy with this one, so... 
Now, there's one other. There's the opposite of this. <laughs> if you turned into our stream la- uh, two, two weeks, weeks ago, ago yep. I built a new PC inside this entertainment center behind me. And oh, I've had a couple builds so in this cool. cabinet. It's so cool. It's really cool. But one thing I realized over the years of doing this, I originally had just a standard air-cooled CPU and GPU in there. And that really isn't ideal because there is not a lot of ventilation in that cabinet, even less than there is in my all-glass PC case um, because there's literally no vents, like literally zero vents because it was not meant to house a PC. So when you have an air-cooled CPU and GPU in there, they're just kind of blowing air around, Hmm. but not really like bringing in a ton of fresh air. Not really. There's not really like an airflow path through it like there is with a lot of traditional PC cases. So I've done something kind of unique with this, with the most recent build. You guys can go see the build stream. Both the CPU and the GPU are now liquid cooled. I've got the Astral LC5090 in there and the radiators are mounted to the back of this bracket that I'm using for the motherboard. So both the tubes go back and then on the back of the motherboard, the radiators are blowing out the back of this piece of furniture. I pulled the back piece of cardboard out. It is open to fresh air and it gets, it means you're basically bringing in fresh air and blowing all that heat out the back of the furniture and not letting it like circulate around inside. Creative solution, as Ice Vixen says in chat. Yes, it's very really unique. And it is something you can only do with liquid cooling. It has made such a difference to the performance and silence of this machine. So I took this footage while I was playing Spider-Man 2 with like ray tracing on, a bunch of bells and whistles. Um, and you can see the temperatures. Well, you might, I don't, depending on if you're maximized or not, the temperatures are not bad. The GPU is like in the high 60s. Maybe it gets up to like 72 in certain That's really scenarios good. when it's completely pegged. But for such a small space with such little ventilation, that's great. That's and that's really an example. Good. Yeah. Uh, uh, liquid cooling like really shines in a unique way here. And it is the opposite of my desktop where I cannot do liquid cooling. I don't like air cooling doesn't work well in this scenario. You have to go liquid. So we've got an example of where you have to go air. We've got an example of where you basically have to go liquid. And then we've got your PC where... Um, Either or you can, you can do either. Yeah. Um, and it's really up to your budget and just kind of yeah. how you want to configure the case and whether you whether we want to go through the extra trouble of hooking up that radiator and right. stuff like but that. But even you mentioned, right? Not everybody has size has room for a tower of this size in their space, right? Um, some people may prefer just have a slightly smaller desktop in general. And you know, this is a this is a big case, right? This is a very large this is the Leon Lee O11D XL, which is an ROG certified case beautiful super easy to build in i think if you're especially if you're a new builder i couldn't imagine a better case to start with because of how good of an experience it is to build and not just spacious but the way they have that back channel for the psu and all of that for all the cable management like rebuilding in this pc when i put the 5080 and this new motherboard in i was like oh my god this is like the i just love this case so much because it's so easy but it is a little bit larger xl is in its name really nice yeah I so part of it is that it that case is wider, um, and that's what gives you some of that space to mount that radiator on like the the kind of back panel rather yep. than the front. There are cases where you could mount that 360 millimeter rad to the front in sure. a more traditionally sized case. Um, but uh, again, like you, you have to be able you have to be thinking ahead to do that because a, remember a good case can last you multiple builds. Oh, yeah. So you know I didn't expect to do liquid cooling on the GPU when I bought this case. And like I said, I'm still fine with that, but you kind of have to be able to think ahead and case manufacturers also have to have enough kind of foresight to have room for next, next, next gen graphics cards and their radiators. Really good question from Chaco FTW in Twitch chat. He says, is there a hardline water cooling option too? Um, So we talked a little bit about this when we first announced the graphics cards. We don't make separate water blocks but other companies do they have access to our pcbs and stuff like that right so that's really up to water block manufacturers to determine their own compatibility with our cards um you are welcome to like buy a card and swap the cooler on it Uh, it says we'll will warranty be void if using third-party water blocks i don't have a specific answer on that and it may vary from region to region so i would contact support for your region and ask them about warranty for that particular case because i'm not positive um yeah so uh, but but the point is like you can absolutely hardline water cool it yourself it's just not something that we specifically offer you would have to go buy a third-party water block 
that that they have validated compatibility with our Astral card or our Strix card or our Tuff card or whatever, and then and then do that. I've done custom water cooling myself as well. Um, I don't really do it anymore for various reasons. Part part of that is because I'm constantly switching out hardware, and that's just a lot harder to do with custom water cooling. Yeah, um, it didn't make sense for my job kind of at the time, unfortunately. So, but I'm happy with air cooled, especially with my Q mode. So. A lot of questions about availability for these cards. Guys, I know that um, stock is still short. Uh, like Jake said before the stream started, we are trying to make as many of these as possible, get them out to retailers. Um, we're hoping that as the time goes on that we get more and more chips from NVIDIA so we can put them into more and more cards for you guys. I don't have an exact date for a stop dro stock drop next. Um, keep an eye on your local retailers. Check out our Discord. Sometimes people are talking about it in Discord. Um, if you head to rog.gg slash join Discord, you can join our Discord server to stay up to date with all the latest news and announcements and things like that. Um, otherwise, you can also follow us here on Twitch and YouTube. Jake is streaming games with his Astral 5080, soon hopefully an Astral LC 5090 on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays, right? Tomorrow we're doing co-op co-op a game called content warning we're gonna be giving away game keys for that game as well so tune in tomorrow for content warning co-op oh ritz says new egg also has an alert system so yeah there you go there um you, go. you can uh you can uh, do that i believe we we may also have an alert system as well in certain regions if you go to our site for just for our own uh online store so yeah um as always, guys, this is just part of our show. We kind of cut down the, the hour-long stream to make it easier to search and, and watch on YouTube so you're not scrubbing through an hour of stuff to find the main topic. If you want to see the full stream where we do giveaways, we talk about what's on shelf or what's on sale that week, we talk about other tips and tricks, we answer all kinds of questions from chat um, during our full stream, just kind of as we go. If you want to do that, you got to tune in live, ROG Pulse, every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, the other secret is you can watch the full show on Twitch anytime. It's only on YouTube where we cut it down. Um, so yeah, but join us live. It's fun. If you want to ask us questions live, you could do that during during uh, during the show. So um, we will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for joining us. I'm hoping next week we can check out the new Armory Crate, but uh, it depends on a few factors. We've got we've got some good shows for you guys coming. I can tell you that we've got got a few things lined up for the next few weeks. So. Give us a follow, give us a subscribe, and we'll see you then.